Volkswagen's little polo keeps evolving. There's now a three-door version, but what's different about this version isn't just fewer doors, as Gabi Petrala from Volkswagen tells us. All in all, she says, the three door is noticeably more dynamic because of the revised window design and the almost invisible B-pillar. Overall, it's a lower and sleeker vehicle, although the measurements are actually just the same as with the five-door. This three-door Polo is just one more model in the Volkswagen catalog that bears the unmistakable stamp of VW's chief designer, Walter de Silva. Clear lines and perfect proportions are in order for today's Volkswagen design. It's when you take a look at the rear panel that you notice the difference between this model and the five-door version. It now consists of a single piece. The large VW logo defines the front end, plus, of course, the large headlights. VW goes the extra mile with its small cars as well as large. Gabi Pitrala says the company is aware of how important the small car is and that it's becoming even more important. They believe they're ready for all facets of the European market because of the way the Polo can be individually adjusted for different consumers. CO2, for example, is a very important consideration in Europe. There are also tax considerations, and there's a model like the Blue Motion, which gives off 87 grams of CO2 in its exhaust. Another design highlight is found in the lighting. You can't miss those large headlights in the front. And the blinkers have been moved closer to the center. Even the seat backs, with their integrated functions, are not exactly wallflowers. But for this car, VW didn't target a specific group. Gabi Pitrala says that's because a typical German Polo customer isn't like a typical Italian one, for example. In Italy, a family is likely to buy the four- or five-door Polo because the whole family will travel, including baggage. But in Germany, the buyer is more likely to be a single person or even a multi-car household. That's why they've made the Polo as individual as possible and why they offer so many options. Even in the basic version, the security and comfort are comprehensive. The electronic stability program comes standard on all cars. The three-door Polo is cheaper than its five-door sibling. Prices in Germany start at just over 12,000 euros. With the new 3 MPS, Mazda presents the second generation of the compact sports car in the form of the five-door Mazda 3. One of its trademarks is the air vents on the hood. The 260 horsepower 2.3 liter engine with direct fuel injection gets the car to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.1 seconds. The 3 MPS starts at 27,400 euros in Germany. In Copenhagen, the final practice tests are running for the prototype of the new Volvo S60, seen here still under its protective wrapping. An innovative collision warning system on board can even recognize pedestrians and will brake automatically in case the driver doesn't. 
Crashes at speeds of under 25 kilometers an hour can be prevented. The new S60 hit showrooms in 2010. They're luxurious, exclusive, and limited. Here's something you don't see every day. These four cars out on the street. These babies would have cost you a cool two and a half million euros new. Used, they're even more expensive. That's because you can't buy them anymore. The heart of every true car fan skips a beat when this super sports car drives by. And here is where the action is, around the Nürburgring racetrack. In this so-called green hell, you can find out who's boss, who's the best, who's the fastest. First candidate, the Porsche Carrera GT. The Sufenhausener's height is only 1 meter 16, with a ceramic clutch and a carbon fiber chassis. It only weighs 1,380 kilograms. On the other hand, a powerful 612 horsepower gets the vehicle from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.9 seconds. Getting to 200 takes less than 10 seconds. It's not until you get 334 kilometers per hour that the tachometer needle stops. A new price of 450,000 euros makes this super Porsche the bargain buy in this class. But you still can't buy one new, even at that modest six-figure price. Porsche only made 1,282 of them. But it's the GT that leaves all of Porsche's other cars in the dust. Our calculations for one round on the track showed it doing just a whisker under 7 minutes and 29 seconds. Porsche Carrera GT, it's a car who, which, is, uh, which is developed here on the Nordschleife by Walter Röhrl. A lot of time Porsche uh, puts a lot of uh, money to develop the car in all kinds of tracks. So I think this car maybe is the best prepared car for the Nordschleife. While the Enso wasn't made for the Nordschleife track, it does have speed. The fastest street Ferrari flies up to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.6 seconds, to 200 in less than 10, and it can even surpass 350. The Italian sports car can get 660 horsepower out of its 12-cylinder engine. The car is based on the Formula One car driven by Michael Schumacher. The price is 675,000 euros, and that's not the biggest problem, because this one too is no longer for sale. Only 400 of them were ever made, and they've long been snapped up. A run on the Nordschleife makes it worth even more because it's three seconds faster than the Porsche. At 7 minutes and 25.21 seconds, it blew the Carrera's time out of the water. The Ferrari was a good car definitely to use. Uh, it was really confident to me. But the suspension was a little bit too low. The power in the hydraulic was not enough for the Nordschleife. So I had some problems uh, over the Flugplatz or Schwedenkreuz, also direction Tiergarten. But anyway, the car did a good lap time. It may well be a good time, but it's not the best. That one is the Maserati MC12, limited to just 50 cars and costing 696,000 euros. The Italians have a car that's simply big and brutal. True, the MC12 does have the same engine as the Enzo, but it has only 632 horsepower instead of 660. But it's 30 kilos lighter in weight and better suited to the Nordschleife. In the end, the MC is barely one second faster than the Enzo. Its best time is seven minutes and 24.29 seconds. The Maserati MC12 is quite similar to the Ferrari Enzo. Chassis, engine, gearbox are the same. The big difference are the aerodynamic devices. The car is much longer than the Enzo. So we think this car creates more downforce on the Nordschleife and that's exactly what you need for these incredible corners here. But one car could be even more hazardous, the Pagani Zonda F. This is one of the most exclusive cars in the world, at just 17 built per year at a price of around 600,000 euros. 
there are no more than 100 in existence because Mercedes only delivered so many engines. This AMG V12 engine has 602 horsepower, which gets the vehicle to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.6 seconds and 209.8. It's finished accelerating only when it hits 345. Thanks to the near disappearance of carbon, aluminum, and titanium, the Zunda weighs only 1,230 kilos. And that's a big advantage on the Nordschleife. It did a round in 7 minutes and 24.44 seconds. Yeah, our record car from the last year actually was beaten by the MC12. The car still has a good performance. I think we struggled a little bit with the front tires. This time there was a little bit more understeer, uh, what we need to a quick lap time. So I think uh, we will try it again. The Pagani has definitely um, good things to, go, to do a good lap time next time maybe. Each of these four cars is capable of doing the Nordschleife in under seven minutes and 30 seconds. And on this day, all four have done their best on the asphalt. But in the end, there's only one king. That's the Maserati MC12, with a mere 15 tenths of a second over the Zonda F. With apologies to Neptune, this Trident is faster than the gods would allow. <laughs>